This is my FAA private pilot's license. It means I can fly an American registered aircraft anywhere in the world, as long as it's not under instrument meteorological conditions. So why then have I traveled all the way across the world to here in New York City, to this tiny little building on the corner of two very unassuming streets here in Brooklyn? Let me explain. explain to you why I am here in the US. I currently have an Australian issued pilot's license which allows me to fly Australian registered aircraft. That's any aircraft which has got VH before its registration, just like Victor Hotel, Echo Yankee Zulu, anywhere in the world. That's great when I'm flying my own aircraft, but sometimes if I am flying overseas, I like to hire other aircraft and quite often the easiest type of aircraft to find is a November or an N registered aircraft which comes under the FAA, the American Federal Aviation Administration rules and regulations. In 2019 I actually worked with my friend Philippe to do a license conversion basically from my Australian private pilot's license to an American FAA registered one and then you can fly November registered aircraft anywhere in the world as pilot in command. Now that's great for just kind of joy flights and flying around and I've done that in the UK in the past as you would have seen on the channel but I actually wanted to add my instrument rating to that FAA license and in order to do that you do need to take a test, you do need to come here to the US and things get a little bit well, not more complicated, but it's just a few more steps that you have to take. think this next sequence is going to involve me ice skating you've obviously never seen me ice skating and you are sorely mistaken so the first thing you're going to want to do if you want to convert your foreign license to an FAA license is you're going to need to set up an account on a system called IACRA that's the integrated airman certificate and rating application now what that gives you is it gives you an FTN which is an FAA tracking number and you're going to need your FTN whenever you speak to anyone from the FAA regarding your application now if at this stage you don't have any FAA license whatsoever then you can apply for the regular one and you can apply for the instrument rating addition at the same time. I actually did the two things separately, you don't need to do that, you can do it all as part of the same process. But whatever you're doing, you're the first step you need to do is a foreign pilot's license verification. I basically had to say, hello FAA, I want you to verify my license, they give me a form I then fill out that form and give it back to CASA here in Australia who say yes, Stefan Drury does have these licenses and ratings. They then send that form back to Oklahoma and once Oklahoma has that form from CASA and all of my documentation, that's when they can give me a tick and say yes, this person has got the ratings and privileges to be able to get an FAA license. You are then ready to take the FAA written instrument exam. And that's why I had to come to America because you can't do it anywhere else in the world and that's why I headed across to Brooklyn. I'm in Brooklyn now. This is the PSI exams testing facility. This is where I need to take my exam. I'm a bit nervous, I will be honest. In um, quite a noisy Brooklyn, I hope there's earplugs or something because there's a lot going on. And then hopefully I come out of there, for me, which will be, I think it's two hours, but for you in like a matter of seconds, hopefully I come out of here with good news. So wish me luck.
I passed. I actually did quite well in that, a lot better than I thought. And a lot of that's got to do with the, the Shepherd Air program that I used for practice and training beforehand. There was nothing in the exam that I wasn't expecting. The questions that I got, some of them I'd even seen in the practice exams before, and I knew how to navigate around the FAA supplement book that you've got with all the figures and legends and instrument approach plates and everything that you need for the exam. I found it really easy to navigate because you get two and a half hours. And I finished it in 50 minutes. And that's not just some big flex. I think it's a testament to the study strategy that Shepherd Air actually have, which, which got someone like me prepared to take the exam. want to pass the FAA instrument written test and they are Shepherd Air. Now if you are taking the exam as a foreign pilot like me you don't need to take the full FAA instrument written exam the same exam that pilots here in America would be taking if they're doing their instrument racing for the first time. If you're a foreign pilot converting your license you need to take the instrument foreign based pilot exam. Now on top of that there is another version of that foreign pilot exam if you come from one of what's called a BASA or it's a bilateral aviation safety agreement countries of which Australia is one. If you are from a BASA country you take a slightly different version of the instrument rating exam and the good thing about that exam is it's only 40 questions, not the 50 that you normally have to take for the full instrument written here in America. And yes, to study for the exam, like I said, I used a system called Shepherd Air. Now that was because I didn't really feel like I needed to do the full ground school training and then do practice exams. For me, it was about learning what types of questions are gonna be coming up and then doing basically a bunch of practice exams. And Shepherd Air is awesome for that. If you do need to do the ground school component as well for a bit of a refresher, then yes, you could. there's online systems, there's Flight Insight, Sporties, and also some of the other YouTube pilots out there like Angler for Tag, Learn the Finer Points. They all have courses online that you can check out as well. But if like me, you basically just need training for how to pass the test, Shepherd Air, I cannot believe that Shepherd Air is actually well, I can't believe it's legal to be honest. It only costs $45 to get full access to their questions. The same questions that appear on the test. You're not just doing similar questions, you're learning the exact same questions that you see on the test. Now it's not just a bank of practice exams that you go through one after the other. Shepherd Air actually have a really clever system, which is their IP, so I'm not gonna tell you all about it here. And they basically get you match fit. So when you're taking the practice exams, if you take a couple and you're getting in the high 90s, which because of their system I was, they say at that point, just go ahead and do the exam. And that's exactly what I did. The other very cool thing about the FAA instrument written exam, unlike Australia, I don't know what it's like in other countries. In Australia, when you do the instrument written exam, it's a multiple choice test and you have to choose the correct out of four possible answers. The FAA test, you only have to choose out of three possible answers. I just like that. It makes it a little bit easier. I don't know why anyone wouldn't use the Shepherd Air system. It's just, well, like I say, it should be illegal. It's very, very good. Now I have my paperwork and I have everything ready to go. There's still one final part of the process, which is I've got to go to what the FAA call a Fristo Flight Standards District Office, show them my paperwork, show them my identification. They put everything together and hopefully that will mean that the instrument rating, which I've now passed and proven to the FAA that I know how to do that in America, that will be attached to my American license and the whole process will be done. But to do that, I've got to go to JFK. Many times I've ever heard FUSDO mentioned before in the sphere of YouTube is normally when someone's in trouble and um, I believe this is where you have to come if there's been like a FAA violation or something you've been reported to the FAA I've always heard about people coming to the FUSDO to answer some questions and resolve the whole situation uh, so hopefully I'm going to give you a FUSDO positive story on YouTube instead because in this building here where the FAA are located Hopefully this is the last port of call on my whole trip 
to get my instrument rating added to my license. Just got to work out how to get in. One really important point to consider in all this, of course, is you need to make sure that your original pilot's license remains valid. If any of your ratings or privileges lapse on your original license, anything that's tied into that on your FAA license is also going to lapse as well. So once you have that FAA license, it's not just there in perpetuity. You need to maintain your existing one, but you also need to do FAA uh, license revalidations with an FAA instructor as well. You now have two licenses, which is great, but you also have two licenses that you need to keep current. But now I can fly a November registered aircraft anywhere in the world under the instrument flight rules, which I'm really humbled and lucky and privileged to be able to do. And I'm really grateful that I've had the opportunity to do that. If you're interested in a video about the differences between the FAA regulations and CASA's regulations. So basically, what's it like flying in America versus flying in Australia? Let me know because some of the things about flying under the FAA regulations just, they really make a lot of sense and I wish they'd be adopted in other parts of the world, just like Australia. Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I'm gonna enjoy New York. I love this city so much. It's so cool to be back. <laughs>